This is a diagram of the pterygopalatine fossa. It helped me understand the pterygopalatine fossa when I first studied it. Here it is like you are opening the pterygopalatine fossa. You are looking at it from the pterygo maxillary fissure. So in other words, this will be the maxilla and this will be the plates of bone between the medial and lateral pterygoid plates. In other words, this side is posterior and this side is anterior. And of course, the sphenoid is located superiorly and the black structures, these are the, the maxillary nerve and its branches. So the maxillary nerve coming from, from posteriorly, this will be the middle cranial fossa and that will be foramen rotundum. And so it goes forwards into the inferior orbital fissure. And this is the pterygopalatine ganglion connected to it. And its branches are delivered with the branches of the maxillary nerve. Now, let me ask you about the foramina that we can see here. Now, I said that this is the maxillary nerve and this will be the foramen rotundum. What about this foramen? It is in the posterior wall, below and medial. Two foramen rotundum and you can see that the nerve that passes through it is connected to the pterygopalatine ganglia exactly so that is the uh, pterygoid canal the opening of the pterygoid canal and that nerve is in fact contains two types of fibers it contains sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers a combination of deep petrosal and the greater petrosal nerve now, inferiorly, as you can see, the, the pterygopalatine fossa communicates with what? What is located here, inferiorly? And there is a big foramen here, small foramen there. If this is the maxilla, so what is below? Um, the posterior superior alveolar nerve is this one. It's going into the maxilla to supply the molar teeth, but what about behind the maxilla? We are talking about a structure which is located behind the maxilla in the roof of the mouth. So what is it? Oh. Exactly. So that's the palatine bone. And these openings are in the palatine bone. The greater and lesser palatine foramina, which contain the greater palatine nerve and the lesser palatine nerve. So if this is uh, here is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Then that will be the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. And you can see here between it and the sphenoid bone, there is an opening, which is the sphenopalatine foramen. And this is the entrance to what? If I pass a probe here, where do I get into which cavity? Exactly. And so this is the mesopalatine nerve passes here and it will go, I mean, I cannot draw it completely, but uh, it will go down on the nasal septum and then appears through the incisive foramen in the front and the anterior part of the axilla. So these are the communications. And there are some few small openings and small nerves here. These are called nasal branches that supply the mucosa of the nose. Of course, you should keep in mind, why do we need these branches in the palate and, and, and the nose? It's not only sensory, but because these branches, they carry secretomotor fibers, parasympathetic fibers that originated in the pterygopalatine ganglion. The other structure that is supplied by the pterygopalatine ganglion it has its fibers passing with the maxillary nerve and then up into the orbit. What is this nerve that carries also postganglionic parasympathetic fibers? Exactly. So that is the zygomatic nerve. It is giving zygomaticotemporal, zygomaticofacial branches that supply the skin. But the main part of the zygomatic nerve is going to join. There's a loop joining it to the lacrimal nerve. Lacrimal nerve is a branch of which nerve? Which division of the trigeminal nerve? Exactly. And why, why do we call it lacrimal nerve? Because it's connecting to the lacrimal gland. The lacrimal nerve carries fibers from the zygomatic nerve. These are 
ganglionic parasympathetic fibers. Only the distal part of it carries these fibers. The proximal part of it contains only sensory fibers that supply the, the skin of the upper eyelid. And that's how the pterygopalatine ganglion controls the lacrimal gland, the glands of the nose, and the palate. And they call it the ganglion of hay fever. A very good video about the pterygopalatine fossa was produced by Dr. Robert Ackland and was shared by the American Association of Anatomists together with a couple of questions that I'm going to show them to you now. So let's uh, try to answer these questions at least based on the sketch that I provided at the beginning. Match the bony opening with the appropriate location in the pterygopalatine fossa. So foramen rotundum is located in which wall of the fossa? No, it's in the posterior wall of the fossa. This is the posterior wall of the fossa, and this is the foramen rotundum. Okay, in the superior wall, there is no opening. Uh, it's just a sphenoid bone. So in the posterior wall is the foramen rotundum, where the maxillary nerve passes from the middle cranial fossa. Another foramen that is present in the posterior wall is the pterygoid canal. So first one is foramen rotundum in the posterior wall. What about the pterygomaxillary fissure? In which wall of the pterygoparatine fossa is located? That would be the lateral wall. Now, if I will change this question and ask you, the pterygomaxillary fissure is located in which wall of the infratemporal fossa? Yes. So now, uh, as far as the pterygoparatine fossa, the pterygomaxillary fissure is in the lateral wall. What about the greater palatine canal that leads to the palate, to the, to the mouth? Inferior. Perfect. What about the sphenopalatine foramen? It is in the, in the medial wall. Now, the superior wall is closed by the sphenoid bone. So here, um, the sphenopalatine foramen, if you look at it here, this one is the sphenopalatine foramen. It is in the medial wall. That's why it leads into the nose back again. And then we have the infraorbital fissure. That should be easy. If the maxillary nerve comes from the middle cranial fossa through foramen rotundum, passes forwards to the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure, then the inferior orbital fissure is located in the anterior wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. Thank you very much. And here, the other, the other matching question, match the anatomical structures with the bony opening through which it enters or exits the pterygopalatine fossa. These are not my questions. They are Dr. Ackland's questions. Maxillary artery. How does it reach the pterygopalatine fossa? No. Through the pterygomaxillary fissure. Sphenopalatine foramen is located in the medial wall. Now remember, the maxillary artery is located in the infratemporal fossa, first and second part of the artery. The third part of the artery will be inside the pterygopalatine fossa and enters it through the lateral wall, the pterygomaxillary fissure, which is the medial wall of the infratemporal fossa. Nasopalatine nerve, through which foramen Perfect. Maxillary nerve. Perfect. Posterior superior alveolar nerve. It's going to leave the maxillary nerve in the fossa and go to the infratemporal fossa before it enters the maxilla. It's not like the middle and anterior superior alveolars that are branches of the infraorbital nerve in the maxillary sinus. This one is given earlier. So it has to go to the infratemporal fossa. Therefore, what is the communication between the infratemporal and the pterygopalatine fossa? You can use the choice twice. It is the pterygomaxillary fissure. Okay? Now, last choice. Triganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the facial nerve. First of all, do these fibers have a special name? Yes. So, but the parasympathetic are the greater petrosal. The deep petrosal is sympathetic. And then they are going to join together to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal, which will reach the fossa through the pterygoid canal.
that these uh, parasympathetic fibers of the facial nerve, they uh, constitute the greater petrosal. Remember, greater because we have lesser petrosal. The lesser petrosal nerve originally comes from the glossopharyngeal nerve. And it is the preganglionic or the otic ganglion, not for the pterygo ganglion. 